Hey everybody, this is Mr. McKee again with SEC 210. Today me going over lab 26.1.7, which is snort and firewall rules. Let me snap this thing back over here. If I can find it. There it is. Alright, make it a little bit bigger. Alright. Got my de my cyber workstation running on VMware workstation. Um, this lab, if you're in my course, there's 14 questions answered throughout the um, lab, about nine pages. So, a lot of like screen captures those, so it's not too long. So go ahead and make sure you fill out all those questions and you upload those um, to the submission link for uh, credit. All right, now this is a whole bunch of stuff, but Cyber Workstation, all this stuff's running in Mininet, um, so all these are containers. All right, so just look, um, got a LAN here. This looks like the outside, um, like the internet, you could say, ISP router, web servers, attacker. Um, then you have a DMZ where you um, have your web servers and internal servers. All right, so, so router, switches, and then everything in, with the black screen is a host. All right, preparing the virtual environment, um, part one. Part two is firewall and IDS, intrusion detection system, uh, logs, and then part three, terminate and clear mini-net process. All right, in a secure production environment, network alerts are generated by various types of devices, such as security appliances, firewalls, IPS, intrusion prevention system devices, routers, switches, servers, and more. The problem is that not all alerts are created equally. For example, alerts generating by, generated by a user and alerts generated by a firewall will be different and vary in content and format. In this lab, you'll get familiar with firewall rules and IDS signatures. We're using CyberOx Workstation and we need an internet connection. All right, so in this lab, the CyberOx Workstation VM is a container for holding the mini-net environment shown in this topology. If a memory error is received in an attempt to run any command, quit out of the um, step, go to the VM settings and increase the memory. All right, the default is one gigabyte and try two gigabytes. So on my virtual machine, I can right click it. All right, so I have I have one gigabyte of memory, all right, one processor. So it's not running a whole lot at all. All right, so hopefully we don't need that. All right, so um, and notice these instructions are, are referencing VirtualBox, but everything should be about the same. All right, so preparing the environment, uh, launch Oracle VirtualBox and change CyberOps Workstation to for bridge mode if necessary. Now, what you can do though, you can actually open up a web browser in your VM. I don't know, you can go to like cnn.com, I like get. All right, notice it failed. You can also try to ping it. If I go to settings, NAT. All right, bridge is actually sharing your connection, your physical connection. If I do that, let's see, cn.com. All right, notice now it's going to work, unlikely. Maybe not. Um, let's see. I have config. Well, that's probably why it's not generating an IP address. All right, so I was just checking a couple little things. Let's see. I'm actually going to change these settings. I'm going to change this back to NAT. Let's see. Just to show you, you'll probably be set to NAT. All right, so but now if we go to the command line, if we do this script, lab support file, scripts, um, configure as HCP. Cyber ops. All right, now it's configured. Now we can ping, we can ping host. We got cnn.com.
There we go. I'm thinking Palo Alto. Ping host. Just ping www.cnn.com. And if that works, chances are this is going to work. All right. CNN.com. Which it doesn't work. Well, let's try YouTube. Yeah. I don't know why CNN is not working. Strange. Unless it's filtering that out with the firewall. Alright, let's see what it's showing. Ping www.cisco.com. Okay, that's going through too. So maybe the firewall's filtering stuff. Alright, use the if command to verify IP uh, CyberOps Workstation VM is now has an IP address on your local network. In my case, I turned I, I switched it back to um, Back to the NAT. You can do it either way as long as it's getting on the internet. Notice right here, this is a NATed. That's not on my network. The um, VMware, VMware workstation has set up that network for me. That subnet. Alright, so we're good. I'm going to clear this. Alright, so let's skip all the way down to part two. Alright, firewall and IDS logs. Firewall and intrusion detection systems. Uh, are often deployed to uh, partially automate the traffic monitoring task. Both firewalls and IESs match incoming traffic against administrative rules. Firewalls usually compare the packet header against a rule set, while IES often use the packet payload for rule set comparison. All right, because firewalls and IESs apply the predefined rules to different portions of the IP packet, IDS and firewall rules have different structures. Alright, so so again, firewalls usually compare the packet header against the rule set. By IDSs often use the packet payload for rule set comparison. Alright, while well, there's a difference in rule structure, some similarities between the components of the rules remain. For example, both firewall and IDS rules contain matching components and action components. Actions are taken after a match is found. Matching component specifies the packet elements of interest, such as packet source, packet destination, transport layer protocols, and ports, uh, and data included in the pa uh, packet payload. Action component specifies what should be done with that packet that matches the component, such as accept and forward the packet, drop the packet, or send the packet to a secondary rule set for further inspection. A common firewall design is to drop packets by default while manually specifying what traffic should be allowed. Known as drop dropping by default, this design has the advantage of protecting the network from unknown protocols and attacks. As part of this design, it is common to log the events of dropped packets, since these are packets that are not explicitly allowed and therefore infringe on the organization's policies. Such events should be recorded for future analysis. Now, what I can think, if it's letting me ping, it's letting pings through, but it's not letting me get to certain websites. Those websites might be blocked. All right, so let's see. So let's run the script to start mainnet. So su, it's actually dot and then lab support files. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. <coughs> zoom in, zoom in. All right, that's about as big as I can get it. All right, scripts. CyberOps extended topo underscore no and it actually is no forward. I can't really see it, but it's no forward by default. Let me see if I can move this. Alright. Hit enter. Uh, CyberOps password. All right, so it's loading the mini net. You get the mini net CLI. All right, so I've got all this stuff. The mini net prompt should be displayed and indicating that mini net is ready for commands. 
with the mainnet prompt, open a shell on R1 using the command below. <clears throat> so xterm R1. It's case, uh, case sensitive. The R1 shell opens in a terminal window and with black text and white background. What user is logged onto that shell? You can tell by the. I'll let you guys look right there, but. And that's the working directory we're in. All right, what is the indicator of this? I'll let you guys figure that out, but you guys can look, look in there and see. I won't put any more commands in. All right. So from R1 shell, start the Linux base IDS. Snort. All right. So dot lab support files scripts and start snort dot shell. All right. Notice it's starting. All right. You will not see a prompt as snort is now running in this window. If for any reason snort stops running and the root at cyber uh, secops analysts prompt is displayed rerun this the script to launch snort snort must be running to capture alerts later in the lab all right from cyber ops workstation via mainnet prompt open shells for hosts h5 and h10 h5 and external h10. Alright, so all those are open. So h10 will simulate a server on the internet that is hosting malware. On h10 run the mal malware server start. And notice all these are in the scripts folder, so we have to go, we have to go to that actual path. Lab support files scripts how server start. All right, so it started. All right. Use netstat with the um, TUNPA options to verify that the server web server is running. When used as shown below, netstat lists all ports currently assigned to services. So netstat netstat dash TUNPA. All right, so it's listening on that. When there's actually on that port. So, so Nginx, it's running. All right, running locally. Notice it's local address. All right, as seen in the above output, the lightweight web server Nginx is running and listening to connections on TCP port. All right, 6666. TCP is right there. All right, so in the R1 terminal window, an instance of snort is running. To enter more commands on R1, open another R1 terminal by entering the X terminal R1. All right, so if you look at my tabs, I've got R1 there. That's where my, um, my snort's running. All right, it's not giving me a command line, my terminal. All right, R1's here. I'm still inside of R1 though. All right, let's see. You may also want to arrange the terminal window so that you can see and interact with each device. I've got them on my tab, so that's fine. In the R1 terminal uh, tab, run the tail command. <coughs> VAR, R. It doesn't let me tab um, autofill with the tab. That's what I'm getting. I don't know if you get, you guys probably don't hear those beeps, but I just got to type in the exact commands. All right. Because no alerts were yet recorded, the log should be empty, which it is. However, if you run a if you, if you have run this lab before old alert injuries may be shown. In either case, you will not receive a prompt after typing in this command. Um, this window will display alerts as they happen. 
from H5, and I'm going to go up here to my tab, H5, all right, use the wget command to download a file named, and if you guys recognize, if you've taken any of these other security courses, that's a, that's like a test um, virus, or test malware. All right, so and it says design and download content via HTTP. Wget is a great tool for downloading files from web servers directly from the command line. All right, so wget two nine. And I could just copy this out, but I'm gonna type it two dot one thirty three. Notice the our port we're um, requesting is six 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 six. All right. Notice we downloaded it. There's the executable 100%. Downloaded like super quick. It's been saved. All right. So what port is uh, what port is used when communicating with the malware web server? <clears throat> well, um, assuming we're talking about the actual the web server's port is port 6666. The local port is right there, 41970. So, because if I do if config two nine one sixty five two hundred two three five is right there. All right, so it that's just an auto generated port four one nine seven zero. But I'm assuming it's saying what is it listening? It would say if it said what port is 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 it lit is is the web server listening one? That would be six, definitely six 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 six. And what is the indicator? We can tell either way. That's listed under um, our snort log, right? So, did the IDS generate any alerts related to the file download? You can see right there, timestamp, malicious server hit. Priority zero, so that's the highest priority. All right. Based on the alert shown, and this is the alert also, it should be almost identical. Of course, the timestamps will be different. All right. Based on the alert shown above, what is the source and destination IP addresses? I just gave you guys that. All right. Based on the alert shown above, what is the source and destination ports? I gave you guys that already too. Of course, you have to look at it. All right, based on the alert shown above, what did what did the down when did the download take place? You can see right here. It's definitely not local time. That's like the server time, more than likely. Based on the alert shown above, what is the message recorded? What was the message recorded by the IDS signature? I'm assuming that's malicious server hit. All right, on H5, use the TCP dump command to capture the event and download the malware file again so you can capture the transaction. Issue the following command below start. All right, so let's go to H5. Let me if I can clear this. All right, so we use the TCP dump command the i function or i um, option h5 ethernet 0 interface w window dot download okay.
So let's read this again. When H5 uses the GCP double command to capture the event and download the malware file again. Okay. The command is instructs TCP dump to capture packets on Ethernet on interface H5 Ethernet 0 and, and save the capture to a file named nimda download.pcap. Alright, so it's 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 waiting for a um, packet. The end symbol at the end tells the shell to execute TCP dump in the background. Without the symbol, TCP dump would make the terminal unusable um, while it was running. Notice the 156.33 indicates one process <coughs> was sent to the background and it is process ID or PID. In our case, 33.3.3.3.4.7. It says your PID will most likely be different. Press enter a few times to gain control of the shell. So now the TCP dump is captured in packets. Download the. So we're going to do the wget one more time. If we do the up arrow, notice how I didn't have to type that back in. All right, so it's done. Downloaded. I saw another uh, hit on my snort. All right, stop the. Stop the capture by bringing TCP to the foreground. With the FG command. Alright, because TCP dump was the only process sent to the background, there's no need to specify the PID. Stop the TCP dump process with the control C, so the break. Alright, it shows 57 packets captured by a filter. Alright, notice they there shows 316, I've got 58. All right, so H5, let's go to H5. On H5, we're going to list the long version. Make this a little bit bigger. Hopefully you guys can see it. All right, so in this folder, we have a nimda.download.pcap, so packet capture file there. All right, your Directory list may have different mix of files, but you should still see the nimda.download.pcap file. How can this pcap file be useful in a security analyst? Well, you can actually look at the you can look at the, all the um, traffic. All right. So the analytics of the pcap file will be formed in another lab. All right. So tuning firewall rules based on IDS alerts. In step one, you started an internet-based malicious server. To keep other users from reaching the server, it is recommended to block it in the edge firewall. In this lab's topology, R1 is the only running, is not only running an IDS, but also a very popular Linux-based firewall called IP tables. In this step, you will block traffic to the malicious server identified in step one by editing the firewall rules currently present in R1. While a comprehensive study of IP tables is beyond the scope of this course, IP tables basic logic and rule structure is fairly straightforward. The firewall IP table uses the concept of chains and rules to filter traffic. Traffic entering the firewall and, and destined to the firewall device itself is handled by the input chain. Examples of this, this traffic are ping packets coming from any other device on any network and sent to any one of the firewall interfaces. Uh, traffic, traffic originated somewhere else and passing through the firewall device is handled by the forwarding the forward chain. All right, examples of this traffic are packets being routed by the firewall. Each chain can have its own set of independent rules specifying how traffic can be filtered for that chain. A chain can have a particularly, uh, practically any number of rules, including no rule at all. Rules are created to sp check specific characteristics of packets, allowing administrators to create very comprehensive filters. If a packet doesn't match a rule, the firewall moves onto the next rule and checks again. If a match is found, the firewall takes action. Takes the action defined in the matching rule. If all rules in a chain have 
been checked and yet no match has found, the firewall chain takes the action specified in the change policy, usually allow the packet to flow through or deny it. All right, so in CyberOps Workstation VM, start a third R1 terminal window. So I'm going back to Mininet, close that down. All right, so I want to do xterm R1. All right, in the new R1 terminal window, use the IP tables. I can spell, all right, with the uppercase L option and then the B option. All right, so you see chain input, chain forward, chain output. And up here, traffic entering the firewall and destined to the firewall itself is handled by the input chain. So such as pings, traffic originated, ori traffic originated in the firewall device itself and destined for somewhere else, handled by the output, and traffic originated from somewhere else and passing through or traversing the firewall. I would say uh, is handled by the forward chain. Right, what chains are currently in use by R1? I don't see any any working right now. No policies. All right, so connections to the malicious server generate packets that must traverse the IP tables firewall on R1. So they would be the forward. Uh, packets traversing the firewall are handled by the forward rule, and therefore this is the chain that will re receive the blocking rule. To keep user computers from connecting to the malicious server identified in step one, add the following rule to the forward chain on R1. All right, so IP tables again. With the uppercase high option forward, P option TCP, port number D 209.165.202.133, D port or destination port 6666, and option J, and then drop the packet. So any, any packets traversing the firewall with the TCP port 6666 going to this IP address should be dropped. As long as I typed that incorrectly. All right, and it shows you right there what I was talking about. All right, so use the IP tables command again to ensure the rule was added to the forward chain. So we're going to check it before you actually have something traverse the firewall. All right, so it took a little bit of time, but notice now chain forward. I know that text is super small, but all right. We're going to do a drop TCP. And this is any host coming in, any one going out, or any IP in, in IP out from anywhere, or in out, yeah, in out, and then from anywhere going to this. Thing is going to drop if it's going to that port. All right. So now we're going to make it do that. All right. So let's go to H. H5. All right. I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen with the clear command. All right. So W get. All right. Use my history. All right. Connecting to that. It's trying it, but it's not going through yet. All right, now I'm going to break. I'm going to do Control C. Actually, let's let it try it for a little bit longer. I'm going to pause the video. I'll be right back. I want to. I want to just show where it's. Um, it's showing that it, that it failed. All right, so I waited like maybe 
couple minutes in between, but there's the first try. Tried it again, tried it again. It's going to sit here and keep trying it. But um, enter Control C to, to cancel the download if necessary. I'm going to do Control C. All right, but it's, but it's just it's just blocking it. What would be more aggressive, but also valid approach when blocking the offending server? Well, we're up here. So what you could do, you could just block the actual IP address and just you can't get you can't access it at all. That would be a, a more aggressive approach. I wonder if I can ping it. See, I can still communicate with it, but if I if I block the IP address, it's gonna it's not gonna let me do anything. All right, so and definitely before you before you shut everything down, uh, navigate to the terminal you use to start Miniment, which is like right here. This main terminal. All right, uh, terminate the Miniment by entering quit. All right, so I'm outside of I'm out of Miniment. I can see in the home analyst folder. Uh, sudo mn inside ops. All right, so it's shutting the see all those processes that's killing. All right, all the processes are are out, are done for mini net. All right, and that's it. Thanks for watching, and make sure. Yep. Go through here, make sure all those answers are, are um, in there. All right, 14 questions in total. And that's it. Thanks for watching.